Marriage form the fabric upon which interfilial relations are sown. Thus, in most part of Africa, this institution is cherished as not only important for procreation, but acknowledged as a binding contract between families in the African society. In the southeastern Nigeria, traditional marriage is a serious affair, with lots of cultural hurdles to be scaled by the prospective groom. These hurdles involve the groom's family indicating his intention to the kinsmen of the bride, Ikwaka, negotiation and payment of dowry, Imeigo, and the fulfillment of all other prerequisites requested by the bride's family from prospective grooms, so as to confirm his ability to shoulder the attendant financial and psychological responsibilities of marriage. This is linked to a premium placed on brides in the social-cultural milieu of Eastern Nigeria. The hallmark of these marital requirements is the performance of a public ceremony known as Ebankwanya, literally translated to pouring of wine. Customarily held in the compound of the bride's father, the Ebankwo ceremony is an important public affair filled with feasting by friends, kids, kins, and well-wishers of the intending couple. It is therefore not unusual to see a carnival-like atmosphere soaked in vibrant colors of dresses representing different groups celebrating for the cultural consummation of the union with lots of pomp and pageantry. traditional marriage of one of our daughters from this family, Amaka. And the women are the women of this village, Ire village, Enugu. So whenever our daughter is getting married, we come together and support them. So that's why we are all here in our uniform. Yeah. All right, we're still here in Anambra State. I told you that one of the best places you can be at December time is in Anambra State. Now this is one of the events we are here to record. This is Ire village in Enuguku. And incidentally, it is a marriage ceremony. Ibanku, they call it in Igbo land. And believe it or not, I should have been sitting right here amongst the women here, wearing the same uniform with them and doing what I do best. But because I'm coming from another event, I just came in dressed like this. So when you come for a marriage ceremony like this, Ibanku in Igbo land, the women that are married in that community, in that village particularly, they take a stand. And this time, this stand belongs to Ure women. And you can see they are all beautifully dressed in their uniform. And then when they come, they serve them food. Like you see, their food is put aside separately for them. And also, over here you have the Umunne Ndinkewoke, winning the brother, the sisters to the, um, to the man of the house. They are also here. Also, every represented are children from the community. And then when you come here, this is a very important stand. This stand is the stand that belongs to the men of this village. Because when you come to marry a wife from any village, the men are the people you see. You bring the palm wine to them and all the goodies that go with it. So this is Umwekendire, and of particular clan, this village. So let's go. And here, most, most importantly, is actually the in-laws. You create a stand for the in-laws. They sit on their own section. They are also fed like every other person. So the marriage, um, the exchange happens between these people and these people. So these are the in-laws and these are the people they have come to take a wife from. Very important. And when you look here, we have what we, when we say reserved. Usually, stands like this are reserved for friends, 
either of the groom or of the bride. But that is also equally important. And here we have Umu Obu. Umu Obu, they are also the in-laws. Umu Obu, no, no. No, no. So I'm just greeting them in Igbo language, telling them that we greet them. So they are also supporting this tent. They are all from Umuoku. By the way, Umuoku is a village in Oka. Oka is the capital of Anambra State. And we still move on. So here, you also notice that the women from Umuoku came in their own uniform, which is equally very important. I'll save the best for last. Come with me. How are you? Yes, it never stops. Over here, you see family members, especially family of the bride. And also, you see everybody seated. It's a day of merrymaking. And like I said, I'm saving the best for the last. The best for the last. Follow me. Come, 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 come. Here, you see, people are taking pictures with the bride and the bridegroom. Am I correct? Okay. But these are actually reps. Like you get to know as we unfold this special event. Ideally, at this ceremony, the intending couple are to be present. However, in the absence of the prospective groom or bride, he or she is culturally represented by a close relation of the same gender in proxy. Gugi Africa captured the proxy traditional marriage ceremony of Chinedu and Amako Kafo, Iri village of Inuguhu in Anambra state. Proxy marriage is culturally accepted in most parts of Igbo land, wherein a relative stands in lieu of an intended bride or groom during the Ibanko ceremony. Although quite a rarity, the couple, both outside the shores of Nigeria, held back by travel restrictions, and both families have resorted to the age-long cultural practice of proxy marriage. The presentation and breaking of Kolonat a symbolic gesture of reception marks the beginning of the event. After which the proxy bride makes her first public appearance, accompanied by single ladies from her family, to welcome all present to witness the event. Value is placed on Igbo brides. As such, a prospective groom must prove his capacity to take care of a prospective bride to her family by bringing to them several gift items contained in a list. Then comes forth the proxy groom with members of his family, bearing gift items of foods, live animals and other commodities as requested. A thorough check is undertaken to ensure that all items stated on the list are complete. Satisfied, a female goat representing fertility and good wishes from the bride's family is presented to the groom's family, signifying their acceptance of and blessing of the union. Uh, today, we are performing the traditional wedding of our daughter, who is being married by a suitor from Umobu village in Oka. The Igbo culture, as we know, is very rich. Very rich. And wedding in the Igbo land, without what we are doing today, 
no marriage has taken place. Today, everybody, God, the first the creator, was first called. Then we have our ancestors who are also present here. All these bless the wedding. It's a thing of joy to see what is going on here. You know, the blessing of God has arrived. The family of uh, Mr. late Mr. and Mrs. Um, Isokolo Okafo. So um, we are here to celebrate what God has done in our life by making one of the daughters a fruitful vine. God has done it well, so we are celebrating her marriage. With these rites done, the highlight of the ceremony commences with a locally tapped palm wine poured on the floor in a symbolic acknowledgement of ancestral blessing of the marriage. A cup of the palm wine is then poured into a gourd or cup and given by the eldest surviving male in the family to the proxy bride to search for the proxy groom. The significance of it is just one, you see, when, I, when they love bring the one, I, I pour the one to the glass again and put it back on the cake. Then I bring another one and pour on the ground. The significance of it is to show that the wine is meant for woman consumption and to appease the gods of the land that these are meant for them that we are going to use it for our own consumption. As she gracefully dances around the arena, searching for her groom, she is wooed through gestures by men present, which she pleasantly turns down with a smile, till she finds the proxy groom in the crowd, kneels and presents him with the wine. The proxy groom does not drink the wine. This is because, customarily, if he drinks the palm wine, it symbolically binds him in marriage to the proxy bride. The proxy groom, in an explicit show of emotion, affectionately replaces the wine content with money. The money, a symbolic show of appreciation to his in-laws for accepting him into the family. significance of carrying the drink and looking around like as if to say oh where is he seated <laughs> <laughs> actually the actually the bride was looking for the, for the groom you can see that uh, there are lots and lots of people here so the tradition means that the, the bride has to go around and search for the right husband otherwise she, she could even make a mistake and give it to the wrong person so she has to be very very careful that they find who the groom is and eventually she saw the groom seated there and the drink was handed over to the, to the groom. Beautiful. And Beautiful. it is quite significant. Very, mm. very. They both dance to the giver of the wine, who showers them with prayers. I know due to the COVID restriction, the bride could not be here. Now, our ancestors witnessed everything and the marriage has been properly blessed the way it should be. Now, are there any other things that should be done to commiserate, to make this traditional wedding wholesome? It's already wholesomely done. According to the tradition, the major activities are what we've witnessed, which is one, the in-laws bring forth some things to us, according to the list given to them by the community. And what happens is that they, we count it as owners of the children, the child that is going to give, come with their wife. And if we are satisfied, we give them out for marriage. And then what happens is that she was giving drink. If you observe, I gave drink to her, her rep, to go and prevent to the husband would be, which is the brother of the husband, also a rep. And then 
This has been done. That's why you see people eating and drinking because it's, it's been consummated already. But the next thing that will happen is that by the time they are done, we need to, out of the two MPP, that's the he goat they brought, we have to give them one that will go and produce more so that she can be able to feed her husband and the children that she will bring forth. And then we also help them with chicken and yam because they cannot be hungry. That is our own support. And then we'll say, well be for them. Personally, it's a, it's, a, it's a thing of joy to be representing my twin brother because who else could have done that other than me? It's not a new thing in Igbo land for people to act for others. And especially now, you know, the Igbos by nature and tradition are outgoing. We're all over the world. And then occasionally when you're caught up by restrictions, somebody must do it for you. We keep our tradition no matter how, even if it means by prods. So that's why he must get married, but coronavirus will allow him to come in. I had to do it for him. After which the excited atmosphere gets immersed in celebration. A feisty show of merriment with assorted drinks, culinary delicacies, and dance, of course, in celebration of the new union. Salut tout le monde, mon nom c'est Fatimata Bintou Soumari, je suis du Mali, aujourd'hui je suis avec Google Africa, merci. Me llamo Sara Nistro y hoy día estoy aquí con Google Africa, míranos en Google Africa. And on travel tips, here are a few things every first-time traveler should know about Africa. Africa promises untold travel wonders for first-time traveler. And to enjoy that, here are some facts about Africa. Not everywhere in Africa is scorching. Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania and Mount Kenya both have glaciers. Nights can be dangerously chilly in the deserts of North Africa, with temperatures dropping to as low as minus 10 degrees Celsius. It snows in Africa. You can go skiing in the Atlas Mountains in Morocco, eastern and northern Cape Highlands of South Africa, as well as Maloti Mountains in Lesotho. Other places include Uganda's Ruenzori Mountains and Ethiopia's Siemian Mountains. Africa has vast mountainous and exceptionally green parts, from the sprawling rainforests of Uganda, Rwanda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, to the soft green hill country of Senegal, Guinea, and Tanzania. French language is a useful language in Africa. French is even more important as it is spoken in over 24 francophone countries across Africa. 
You may need yellow fever vaccination. For some countries, it is an entry requirement. Consult your travel professional, doctor, about your specific travel needs and medical history. As you plan to visit Africa, we say, bon voyage. Travel Tips segment is brought to you in partnership with Goge Africa Travel Club. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Oh, yeah. 